Hallelujah, church. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's not Vietnam, amen? <laughs> well, it, it may like feel a, like a battleground, amen? But we're not in, in Vietnam. But, you know, we can be in a battle, and that battle of coming in and going out and just really seeking what God wants to do in your life. That as we trust that he ministers unto us as individuals, that God has a plan and a purpose in your life. You know, I want to share something with you this morning. Sometimes you feel like, you know what, Some it just threw me a wrench in life, you know. Uh, you may feel like something just kind of tripped you up, you know. But I believe that as we put life, rather, you know, life uh, things in perspective, and actually as well, you know, putting it, in its place then it organizes itself and the spot where it's given and then from that point you're able to move but until there is uh, resolved you know things that are saying okay you know, I did this or I did that and and maybe it went well with you. Maybe it didn't go well with you. Um, different options, different scenarios kind of came upon the scene. And so, you know what? This didn't go too well. Maybe what you were doing was great, right? Maybe the, the, the actions and everything behind it, you know, it wasn't on your part. That it fell through. Maybe it was on the other end of the stick, as they say. You know, it reminds me of uh, the tug of war game. You know, if first of all, if you're not pulling the the same weight, uh, then you already have opposition there. And actually, in order to play tug of war. You do have that opposition to play that game, you know, and really in any game, you do have that opposition either by the people that you're playing against or there's more leverage on your side, you know, but in order... To be challenged in order to, you could even say, even to be great, you know, you're going to have an opposition. Now, in that opposition, sometimes it could be that even of yourself, you know what I'm saying? Yourself as I'm not valued enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not strong enough, I'm not beautiful enough, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that. And so we degrade, we degrade and we pull ourselves to the side, devaluating of who we are and what can we do. You know, that's a difference between 
me saying, I'm going to do something for me versus God saying, I have this for you to do. You see, when I'm choosing to do something, there's a choice. And the choice is to be in God's perfect will to do his will or to be outside of God's perfect will. I believe that we along the road will always be challenged, you know, and it's not to say of your faith that your faith is not being challenged. Sometimes it is. Sometimes the challenge is, oh, I'm going to walk by faith and we all walk by faith, but I don't want to do nothing that's going to promote me to go over to the other side. I'm really praying in, in Jesus' name that that uh, I'm making myself clear to bring an understanding because through these radio broadcasts, you know, my um, agenda is to use God's word as a living force, which we know that it is, to bring accomplishments in our lives so that even though we may be going through struggles and heartaches, you know what? God is by my side. He's teaching me along the way. He's guiding me along the way. And if I am a living vessel for the kingdom of God to help, to help you move along the way in making those godly choices and allowing God to, to have his divinity over and in our lives that we will make those right choices. But it's not only just about making the right choices, but making godly choices. Amen. Amen. And so, like I'm saying, it's not only like I shared in the video yesterday about doing the thing right. Because you could still be doing the thing right. But if you have bad attitudes or if your intentions are bad, even though you've done the right thing, you're still doing it wrong. You see what I'm saying? So... That is where, you know, there's a fine line where the rubber meets the road, where maybe not you yourself, but other people involved can be offended. Or maybe yourself can be offended if you're the one that the intentions are right. And your mind is pure. And your mind is holy. And in your heart you know. That you know. That you know what. Yes I'm coming against a rock and a hard place. But. My heart is in it. My heart is in it. Not to bring hurt. Not to bring affliction. Not to bring persecution. But. I know that what I've been seeing going on in the break room is not right. Or maybe your your boss is handling you and it's not right. In order for you to keep the job or to do this or to do that. No. 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 God is is justice and it's more painful and it's more hurtful when you're coming against people that should know better when it, when you're coming against an authority figure because believe me church I've heard it before I've been 
in the church that there was a struggle along the way that after a while when we had to dismiss ourselves because of their choice of continually of wanting to to ride in that sin per se it wasn't a healthy atmosphere and then come to find out weeks later maybe two or three weeks that you know what that someone else you know a younger person because she was uh younger in her mind and knew that you know what I can't be touched there. And the excuse was, oh, I didn't realize it. Or it was an accident. So you see where there's fine lines. You can fall into the number like everybody else. And, and fall into fear or, you know, like a lot of people say, ah, oh, just close your mouth. And I'm saying it nicely. Don't say nothing. Hide it under your lip. Hold your mouth back. You know. And that's pretty strong. Especially when you have a knowing inside of you and you and it's not that someone told you no now you've seen it or now you've been around it or now maybe it's you and so who is going to put a stop who is going to put a stop to it are you Are you just going to let that sin to be sin and keep that sin covered? No, a person and authority, even though you may feel, well, I'm going to bring on confrontation. Well, maybe that's what's needed. Because sometimes, and I know, believe me, I know, when I've gone, a, you know, across the world, when I went to Peru, I believe it was in Peru, um, our custom here was my family. Somos Latinos, Mexicanos, you know, you may say, oh, eres una gringa. <laughs> But, you know, my descendants uh, on my mother's side, vino de Mexico. So, and some are saying, woo-hoo-hoo. Um, so I do have that, that descendant of blood. When I, grow, when I grew up, you know, now I know not every Mexican family, amen, is like this. But we grew up like this with respective attitudes towards one another and gestures with love. Que besamos en la chiqueta. You know, that we kiss on the cheek. Now, of course, we don't do that to a stranger. But there's borders of respect. And when you feel that comfort zone, just to have like a brotherly spirit, a sisterly spirit, then you know that there is confidence there that boundaries will not be broken. Minds will not be misunderstood. So see, there's a difference there, church. 
Because there's a maturity. There's a growth. And so, when we greet one another, cuando saludamos one another, we greet with a holy kiss and with a handshake. Amen. That's biblical. And other third world countries, that's a normal, healthy handshake. With the cherry on top. <laughs> And that's regular. So when I went to this third world country. I was accustomed to it. I didn't have a problem with it. As a matter of fact. You felt the 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 love of the person. You know. The amable. But. A person knows. When the gesture is wrong. You know, when that handshake wasn't a handshake, when that hug wasn't a hug, when that touch was just quite a little different. And there's a difference. And so you create an atmosphere of protection. And so you should. You should. You create boundaries. To protect yourself, to protect others, because apparently the other is not. You think of their families, their wives, their children. And now there's a distance out of respect. I know this morning that it seems a little heavy and probably uh, strict reinforcement. But what I'm sharing with you today is testimony. One thing that the enemy wants to destruct is your testimony. And that is the most precious thing that you can have. And when a person is violated, it's your testimony. Because we can say, you know what, I've been through the fire, but I didn't get burned. I know how to get burned. I'm understanding the concepts, but now it's not even of my own will. But I'm not going to fall for it. I'm not going to go that route. I'm not going to do that. I'm not. So that's what I'm sharing with you today. Putting God first. Knowing when to give. And also knowing when to hold back. Until what? That comfort zone. Not to stay there. Not to stay in the comfort zone, but in the safe zone in the Spirit of God. And you know that it's not yourself. You know that it's not yourself because you're not that way at all. So it's not that you have the hard heart or it's not that you don't have that openness It's just a protection. It's a protection. A Holy Ghost protection. Not allowing ourselves to be willingly deceived by lying 
spirits. You know, pretty much for all this month, um, you know, we've been dealing with snakes, the videos, uh, even the teachings. The Lord's been putting in my path, you know, about snakes. And so, you know, when someone gets bit by venom and has been a survivor, sometimes the antidote of the cure from that venom is in itself the actual venom. So how could a negativity with another negativity cause a positive? Because sometimes it's what you already know what to do. And it's the decision to create Another positivity to make it that much more right. Now, a negative and a positive can work fine to maintain. You see what I'm saying? But that's where you grow and you realize, okay, if they done me wrong, that doesn't mean that I'm going to do wrong. But it's made me that much more stronger to help those that are wrong to bring them out of that. Because we've already been there. We've already, already gone through that. Now, if others choose to want to live in that, and you've made it clear that you're not about that, then you're free. You're free. And that's where the Lord wants us to be is in that freedom. So, I'm almost finished here, church. But I'm going to give you the word before I wrap up. There at the book of Galatians, chapter 5, where he says, Life by the Spirit. So I say live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law in other words you don't have to do it the acts of the sinful nature are obvious and I want to share this with you sexual immorality impurity debauchery idolatry Witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, self-ambition, distension, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Boy, you felt bullets were coming at you, right? But God says, I warned you as I did before. So he's saying, been there, 
done that know what it's about that those who live like this will not enter what will not inherit the kingdom of God will not enter the kingdom of God will not enter into eternal life will not enter into the things of God will not inherit the kingdom will not enter heaven that's heavy that's heavy but that is sin now i'm going to lead you to what is life what is the spirit and what is the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the spirit is love it is joy it is peace the peace of god it is patience it is kindness it is goodness it is faithfulness it is gentleness it is of self control can you be self controlled can you keep your hands to yourself not easily swayed into doing this and to doing that can we have self control cuz god is saying against such things against such these things that i just said there is no law that is the law that were everything else has been broken and now you have been set free into what the things of the spirit against such things there is no law see those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the sinful nature those who belong to Jesus Christ has crucified the sinful nature in other words the flesh and the passions and the desires amen The word of the Lord reads since we live by the spirit now it's confessing if we live by the spirit let us keep in step with the spirit in other words let us walk according to the spirit let us do according to the spirit let us hear according to the spirit let us act according to the spirit let us not become conceited and provoking and envying each other I know that's heavy but that's life if we want the spirit of god to live in our life we must permanence there we must live there we must, we must dwell there we must uh think on those thoughts live in that domain into the things of Christ you know i don't like it when i have to think on other things besides with what i do if something captivates my mind other than this i don't enjoy it it's good for a little while it's good for a little while but when it's done and over with what happens have we abandoned the spirit are we walking in the spirit are we pleasing that of the spirit or are we quenching the spirit Are we loving the spirit? Are we walking according to the spirit? Are we hearing the spirit? Let us love God. And let us put God first. 
And when we feel affected, maybe a snake bit you. And now you feel affected by it. Add that venom contrary to that. Release it, let it go, and just move on. Free your mind. Give it to God. And also, confront it. Give it back to man. And then let God rule in that area. And whatever happens shall happen. And I pray that it will be in the way of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you remove any spirit of remorse, any spirit of mishap, any spirit of mistake, any spirit of failure. And Father, we just bring them to the feet of Jesus. Have your way today over and in our lives, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the spirit of conviction over our lives, not of condemnation. Father, we walk by faith and not by sight. We move in your power and your authority and your dominion. Wherever you lead us, Father God, we shall follow. Because you've created us to be the head and not the tail, that we're above only and not beneath. And I thank you, Lord, that we're blessed and the city were blessed in the fields. And everywhere we go, we exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Church, we love you, we love you, we love you ever so much. We'll see you so very soon. Thank you for podcasting here with me this morning. And know that we have the victory. Amen. We've crossed over the Jordan. Hallelujah. We've crossed over the Jordan. But you know what? Now there's giants in the land. Now there's giants. But you know what? That wall of Jericho at as at its appointed time will be knocked down in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, church, for podcasting with me once again. And we will see you so very soon. And we continually to move forward into the things of Christ. Love you, love you, love you. Hey, share the word, amen. Share the word. Get it out there. And um, and be a blessing, amen. Be a blessing. And let me know what's going on, amen. Amen. Uh, And we'll see you so very soon. God bless you. God bless you, church. Amen.